Hello, hello, hello. Welcome guys, welcome back channel. Thank you for stopping by. Um, in today's video, we are talking about vocal processing. This is something I struggle with all the time. I cannot tell you how frustrated I am 24 seven because of vocals. Um, so I literally spent all week working on these vocals for this song that I'm trying to finish for this video that you guys are hopefully gonna see eventually, but um, it's taking so long that I thought I'd make this shorter video, a tutorial about how I'm doing the vocals on this track, because the other video is going to be more on the production. Um, yeah, it's going to be very inspired by vocals like Empire of the Sun and also a bit of Tame Impala, kind of very spacey, not from this earth type vocals. Um, that's the sound that I really love most uh, that I want to get, but it's really hard because you know, the reverb can sound really messy when you just have so much reverb happening and it can really mess up your mix. So uh, I'm gonna show you guys a few tricks today, a few things I discovered myself and a few tips I got from other people uh, when I've asked other friends and uh, professors how to get this type of sound. So first, let's just take a look at the raw vocal of me just singing into the mic, and then I'll show you guys the processed final product uh, that we'll be, we will be getting to today. Just a feeling we floated past the seasons tied this box of town. My little mind has opened up to the reasons why I your desire for love. Just a feeling we floated past the seasons tied so the first thing we need to do to get this sound is actually to layer our vocals and I got this tip from a recording prof when I was at music school uh, he thought that people like Empire of the Sun uh, Luke Steele his voice in some of the songs uh, it sounds like one vocal, but it, he thought it was actually, you know, four or five layers of different takes of the same verse. And then they were just lined up as close as possible and really processed intensely. So it sounds like it's just one vocal. And since all the vocal recordings were mono, um, that it still sounds, you know, it's not pan, so you can't really tell that the layers are there. Uh, it just sounds like one big vocal right in the middle. Um, so that's the first thing I did here. Just a feeling we floated past the seasons tied this box of time. And then what I did is then group them together uh, going Command G in Ableton. And then on the group uh, sort of bus channel, I did all my vocal processing. Um, so all the takes, all those four best takes are being processed uh, the exact same way and I actually tested it out by processing all four of them individually with EQ compression and then putting them together versus you know grouping them right from the start and just processing them all together on the group channel and I actually preferred how it sounded on the group channel and then what I did next was EQ and compress how I normally do um, this might look a little wacky to some people but this is kind of Definitely heavily inspired by Alex Tumay. Uh, he has a bunch of live streams on YouTube. Uh, he really opened my eyes up to kind of EQing completely by ear. And uh, that's what I do now. And I throw on as many EQs as I need to really make the vocal sound professional and sound like it cuts through the mix. So this first EQ, I'm just cutting out uh, 52 hertz. A lot of YouTube channels will recommend you you high pass the vocal up to like 120 hertz sometimes, which is just ridiculous. And then next thing, I'm using the Waves vocal compressor. I'm just doing like three to six dB of compression. And then I have the attack set to slow. In general, for compression, I go from compressors with longer attacks 
to shorter attacks over the course of processing the vocal. Next up, we have another EQ, surprise, surprise. This one, I'm using uh, wider cues. I also gen generally go from wider cues to more sh thinner cues as you, as you go through the chain, the vocal chain. Um, if you don't know, the Q factor is just the width of the cut or boost. For example, I, this is a thinner Q versus that's a wider Q. This first EQ is really meant to emulate kind of a mixer who, or a recording engineer who is getting the vocal um, and it's going through an LA-2A compressor hardware and maybe an SSL board and he has an SSL EQ that has uh, maybe no cues or wider cues on the SSL board because a lot of SSL boards don't have even Q knobs uh, to adjust that. So the, the cuts and boosts will generally be wider at this point. And then we have another compressor. Up to this point, it sounds like this. Just a feeling we floated past the seasons tied this box of time. And Without the EQ. With it. And then we have another EQ. Another EQ. So you can see here, I'm really boosting a lot of the top end. Uh, and then, you know, cutting out some of that mid-range and uh, just above 1K here. And then I have another compressor just a feeling we flow doing 3 db compression this is the renaissance this compressor by waves time. so this is called serial compression the whole idea here is that if you use multiple compressors and do uh, smaller amounts of compression per compressor it's supposed to sound better than just doing one compressor that has like 20 db of compression instead i'm spreading it out over you know several compressors that are only doing three, four, five dB of compression. And then I have a de-esser. Just a feeling we floated past. Another EQ. Has opened up to the reasons why desire for love. So we're starting to get there. Just a Another EQ. Past the seasons tied this box so you can see at this point, um, my Q factor is getting thinner. I'm doing a lot more fine tuning here now instead of big cuts and boosts. And then next we have a Neutron that's doing a little bit of tape saturation on the top end and the mid range. Just a feeling we floated past the sea. You can just feel that makes the vocal like bite a bit more. And then I have a multiband compressor that I use a bit as an EQ. Um, but it's also compressing it and really making it sound up front. Um, I'm bringing in quite a bit of top end through this compressor. Just a feeling we floated past. I'm actually using the Ozone 8 imager to widen the vocal um, because I knew that, you know, Empire of the Sun really likes to have wide vocals. Just a feeling we floated past this box And now a bit of chorus. Time. My little mind has opened up. And then I'm doing some distortion and hyper dimension using the Serum FX plugin. And then I have auto tune. My little mind has opened up. And then I have more EQ. Uh, this time you can see I'm doing really thin cuts here. I think this EQ I did after I dialed in a bit of the reverb and I just wanted it to sound a bit thinner. A lot of beginner producers uh, think that there's certain ways to EQ certain instruments and certain things because that's kind of what's taught on YouTube. You know, you always do a, a low pass on a kick and cut out the top end, but that's not how you should use EQs. Um, the minute I started using EQs um, both creatively and for mixing just to, to sculpture out and carve out the the frequencies and the, the type of sound that I wanted out of everything I was working on, it just made the biggest difference. Um, so I definitely recommend you guys to use EQs, but uh, use them by ear and dial in the cuts and boosts to whatever you like in the sound and carve it to whatever sound you want. 
Um, it's just like a, a knife that you can use to chip stone. If you imagine uh, getting a block of stone as your vocal and you want it to look like, um, you know, Da Vinci, you have to carve out, uh, you know, a beautiful sculpture of Da Vinci uh, using those EQs that you have. Um, and it's the same thing uh, with sound. It's you're just cutting out frequencies so that you, you carve out the exact sound that you want. Um, and as soon as you start EQ using EQs that way, it'll change the game for you, I guarantee. Another compressor. So you can see uh, that this compressor actually boosted the gain quite a bit. Just a feeling we floated past the sea. And I think I wanted that, but that's something you should watch out for in that a lot of these fancy plugins by Waves, uh, emulation plugins, when you throw on the compressor, uh, even if you're only compressing a few dB, because of the makeup gain or the output knob, um, it's just going to boost the gain of your vocal. And you might think it sounds automatically better because you just threw a compressor on there and you think it's the compression that's making it sound louder, but it's actually just the gain uh, knob on that compressor that's making it sound uh, better. So what you need to do is to dial in your compression and then actually lower the gain knob so that it matches, uh, you know, what the vocal was at the gain the vocal was at beforehand, and then turn on and off the plugin. Uh, and if the gain is the same, you can hear the difference that the compression is actually doing. Compression actually makes things sound quieter, and that's why there is that gain knob, the makeup gain. Um, that can boost it up a little bit uh, to kind of make up make up knob for the lost gain uh, through compression. And then I actually have one last compressor that I'm doing a little bit of side chain to my kick um, because with all the reverb and effects, I just thought it sounded a little bit more. It blended in a little bit more in the mix with just like 2 dB of side chain compression to the kick. That's not something you would typically do at all. Um, so this is like a crazy chain. This is not a typical vocal processing, um, but it's really an exaggerated vocal processing. I think we're trying to use every tool we have to try to get that really electronic sound that, you know, Empire of the Sun is so good at. And now we get to deal with the reverbs and delays. Um, so this part is really tough, not gonna lie. A tip I recommend for you guys is to just like the EQs uh, with your reverb to try to make your own reverbs from scratch. Uh, I've started doing that recently and it's so much better than the presets that just come with the reverb. So the first reverb we are doing is uh, this bright hall um, and I was kind of messing with the mix while I was messing with the mix knob for the bus channel uh, or the return channel in Ableton so uh, it's only at 32 percent but often people will put up the mix a hundred percent and then dial in this mix knob over here and this is what it sounds like just with the vocal just a feeling we floated past the season's tide and then this is what it sounds like with the bus processing uh, for the reverb. Just a feeling we floated past the seasons tied this box of time. So huge, huge difference. And the trick here is to not just bus your reverb and leave it. It's to uh, do what you can to try to exaggerate that reverb and make it sound uh, as good as it can by using EQs uh, and compression, chorus, whatever you want and you need to do on that bus channel to really bring out whatever you need to from the vocal. So the first thing I have in this chain on this return channel is a compressor that's doing some side chaining to the uh, group channel of the vocals. And what, what that is doing is every time you know, the vocal comes through this compressor. Uh, the compressor is going to duck the reverb signal by 15 dB here. Um, and that, that way the vocal just cuts through more. It cuts through all the messiness of the reverb. And uh, it kind of gives it that sound like it's a bit up front, but it's also still in the beautiful space that you have it. So there's a lot of low end um, happening. And 
Uh, we then dealt with that by using two EQs on the bus channel or return channel of this reverb. Uh, first EQ is really aggressively cutting out some of the low mid frequencies and then boosting some mid highs. And then the second EQ is really just pushing up those, those top frequencies. All right, next we have some delay, an eighth note delay. And you can see I'm using the filter option in this Ableton delay plugin, which is the equivalent of doing an EQ on this delay. Um, I'm also using sidechain compression to the group bus of the vocal so that the delay signal ducks every time the vocal comes through. Next up we have an echo, a quarter note delay. So that last one was an eighth note, now we're doing quarter note. And you can see that uh, I'm using the filter option again, uh, which is cutting out all the low end below 1K. And then finally, I have one last reverb. Crazy, I know, so much processing. We have a spring reverb uh, from the Waves guitar uh, pedal plugin, Guitar Stomp 2, and that's the vocal, that's, that's it. I know it was a lot of processing, um, but to be fair, we have to realize that, you know, as home producers, bedroom producers, uh, we are doing everything ourselves from start to finish. In a professional setting, um, you know, it, the vocal will go through several hands. Uh, a Beyonce or A-list artist is going to be recording in a big studio where they're going to have a recording engineer and they're going to have hardware. And likely the recording engineer is using uh, an SSL board and they'll be doing an EQ on the vocal before it even hits Pro Tools, uh, as well as compression, hardware compression through a LA-2A compressor or something like that. And then, and then the vocal then gets handed to uh, the music guy or producer, whoever's dealing with the rest of the production. And, uh, and they might do a little EQ compression on the vocal, make sure it fits a little better. better. Maybe this compression EQ is kind of creative um, and make sure the vocal pops. And then they're gonna hand it off to the mix engineer. And the mix engineer is gonna do even more EQ compression on the vocal to make sure the vocal really blends in and fits nicely with the rest of the mix. Um, so uh, we, we have to realize that like there is probably uh, many layers of EQ compression happening over the course of the process. And I personally wouldn't be afraid of using a ton of EQs and compressors to get whatever sound you need out of your vocal uh, like I did because at the end of the day it's just about how it sounds and if it sounds good to you it doesn't really matter how you got there it's it's it doesn't matter all right with that said uh, thank you for stopping by I hope you guys got something out of this something you can take home and use on your own vocals uh, please like comment subscribe if you're enjoying the content and I will catch you guys all very soon in a future video.